Hello, I'm Father Robert Spitzer. Like many of you, I was dismayed by the recent article in Eureka Magazine, the science magazine for the London Times, which addressed Stephen Hawking's new book, The Grand Design. In that book, Dr. Hawking contends that the universe has no need of a creator and justifies this by saying that's because the universe can create itself out of nothing. He further maintains that it's physical laws, like the laws of gravity, that enable the universe to create itself out of nothing and thereby to avoid the necessity of a creator outside the universe. I think you may want to be aware of three points which significantly mitigate these very questionable conclusions of Dr. Hawking. First, uh, what Dr. Hawking contends is that the universe can create itself out of nothing. Now, if you really look at that statement for a second, it betrays what's on Dr. Hawking's mind. Because, after all, if the universe had no beginning, if the universe was not created, if Dr. Hawking really doesn't believe that the universe had a creator, then why would he have to explain how the universe could create itself out of nothing? In other words, if Dr. Hawking didn't think that there was some reason to believe that there was a creation event or a beginning of the universe, why in the world would he find it necessary to explain how the universe can create itself out of nothing? So already we see that Dr. Hawking uh, at least has some thought about the universe having a beginning or having a creation, which causes him to think that he has to explain how the universe could do this by itself. The second thing, why would Dr. Hawking think that there was a creation or that the universe came out of nothing or the universe had a beginning, an absolute beginning. Uh, there's significant evidence from physics today that uh, suggests this. Evidence which goes uh, back to uh, proof uh, made in 2003 uh, by Arvind Borda, Alexander Vilenkin, and Alan Guth. Uh, in this particular proof called the BVG theorem, uh, what they show is that any universe with an average Hubble expansion greater than zero ultimately is going to have to, uh, to have a boundary to pass time. And that boundary to pass time, in turn, will eventually imply, as one kind of moves back through perhaps a pre-existing uh, 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 time before the Big Bang itself, or uh, an oscillating universe with many oscillations, eventually it will ultimately have to imply a beginning of the universe. So what we see then is with this proof, there's a vast applicability of this proof to multiverses, to oscillating universes, uh, to pre-Big Bang periods, to uh, pre-Big Bang periods with higher dimensional space. All of these things uh, allow for an application of the BVG theorem to them, which implies, seriously implies, an absolute beginning of the universe or any possible hypothetical multiverse in which it might be situated. Furthermore, Arvind Borda and Alexander Vilenkin themselves in 1993 also gave another proof uh, for the beginning of all inflationary model universes. Furthermore, the theory of entropy, has that's the second law of thermodynamics, has adduced several reasons why one might think that even an oscillating universe had a beginning or the universe itself had a beginning. And these are all elucidated in a, a website that we have constructed with fact sheets and, and podcasts that you can find on Magis, M-A-G-I-S, reasonfaith.org. MagisReasonFaith.org. Uh, you may also uh, get my uh, new book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. In this book and in the fact sheets and podcasts, I give a detailed explanation of these different proofs for the beginning of the universe. The third mitigating factor you may want to be aware of is the self-contradictory nature of Dr. Hawking's claim. Because after all, if the universe is really nothing, and we mean nothing by nothing, then really it is self-contradictory to assert 
that the law of gravity or any physical law or M theory or uh, hypothetical strings could explain how the universe created itself out of nothing. For after all, if the universe is nothing, then where do the strings fit in? They exist. If the universe is nothing, where does the law of gravity fit in? A physical reality like the law of gravity, where does that fit in? So really, if the universe is really nothing, then it's self-contradictory to assert that a physical reality like strings or the law of gravity actually existed when the universe as a whole supposedly was nothing. That is to say, did not exist. It is for these three reasons, then, that I find these conclusions of Dr. Hawking, well, challenging at best, very questionable and dubious at worst, because after all, number one, he's already assuming a creation or a beginning. It's the only reason you would want to justify how the universe could create itself out of nothing without a God. Number two, there is a lot of evidence out there from space-time geometry, from the Borda, Vilenkin, and Gu theorem, from the Borda and Vilenkin proof in 1993, from the law of entropy, which suggests from physics that the universe itself had a beginning or any multiverse in which it could be situated. That also had a beginning. And thirdly, the claim that Dr. Hawking makes really is self-contradictory. Because if the law of gravity, a physical reality, existed while the universe supposedly did not exist and was nothing, then of course we have an obvious contradiction. I will uh, uh, refer you again to the Magis uh, Center for Reason and Faith, and the website there is www.magisreasonfaith.org and the book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Thank you.